mentioned earlier today, there's a post-draft power ranking from, uh, from uh, USA Today. They've got Kansas City number one. There you see it. Baltimore number two. New Orleans followed by San Francisco, then the Vikings and the Colts and so on. And, you know, you get to number nine with Pittsburgh. I think that's a little ambitious, but that's what it is. I did, mainly because I don't know uh, Ben Roethlisberger's situation. Where are the Browns? Well, they're not on the top ten. Let's uh, continue and see if we can find them. All the way down at 26, they've got Cincinnati, who, by the way, released uh, wow. yeah, Andy Dalton today. And they've got uh, the Browns at 26, which I, I think is a little undersold there. What do you think? Well, you know why? Because the Bengals drafted my guy, Logan Wilson from Wyoming, <laughs> from Wyoming that linebacker. He was, my, he was my favorite guy. I was sitting there in draft, second day of draft night, wearing my, my Wyoming Cowboys sweatshirt, hoping they would draft Logan Wilson. Wow. And they did? And they did. The Bengals did for the, that, that the uh, Browns would take him, but he was first pick in the third round. Actually, he's a pretty good player. He was a linebacker. But to say that the Bengals with the rookie quarterback, even with the immortal Logan Wilson joining them, are better than the Browns? Well, I think they're right at the 25th spot, but I just don't believe the Browns yeah. would be 26. I'll tell you this. Can you imagine if the Browns end up having the worst six, uh, what, so it'd be the sixth worth, uh, let me try to speak English. If they ended up with the sixth worst record in the NFL, what that would be like around here? Oh. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. And, no, and like, this is, is a team that should win eight to nine games, if not more. Right. Um, they have to be better and, than they were last year. And, you know, now I will say this, uh, I never wanted to hear any excuses about the draft or whatever, because everybody was doing all the virtual stuff. But it is going to hurt the Browns by not having this variety of mini camps and that because that is when you start uh, not only teaching your guys the offense, but just looking at them physically in that. You know, you don't have – I mean, right now, if you were having these mini camps, because uh, I think to be having one, you would have Bill Callahan right now standing over uh, Wills saying this is how you go from right tackle to left tackle. And this is what I did for Terrence Smith to make it work. This is, in other words, hands-on. Because so much of that, I was told by somebody who knows about switching to cat tackle positions, because I certainly don't, is creating what he called a whole new set of muscle memory. And that's doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's just like, remember, uh, Van Pelt talked about how he wanted uh, uh, Baker Mayfield to, when he's in a shotgun, to catch the ball with his left foot forward instead of his right foot. I think that was it. I forgot which foot it was. Whatever foot he was using <laughs> last year, he wants him to do the other one. Again, it's muscle memory. Right. Well, um, it, it'll, it'll be interesting, but uh, I, I just think the Browns have to be better than they were last year. And if you're putting them They in, better in the be. Team, I mean, we'll, sir, they have – well, you would think they have to be. Of course, you would have thought last year, well, they were 7 and 8. They got to be a little better than that. Seven, eight, one. You know, heading into 2019, after what happened in 18. Well, they'll have the home. Happen. They'll have the home field advantage for the draft. There you go. <laughs> Got to look at the Browns bright side. fan Super Bowl. The Super Bowl for Browns yeah. fans has always been the draft. And we, you know, this would be nice if you're going where hey, you're actually uh, in the middle of the draft or something else, and we're a year from now. We went through the draft, and there wasn't any debate about quarterback because Baker Mayfield showed, at the very least, he's an above-average NFL quarterback. They certainly have surrounded him with everything. I wrote a column that's going to be up tomorrow, Wes. In some ways, the, the 2018 draft is on trial now. Uh, by the way, Nick Chubb, you're excused from this discussion. You've proved your worth. You're, you're wonderful. But it's not only Baker, as we know. You know, Denzel Ward's got to show he's healthy and play better than he did last year. Um, because he, he in 2018, he had uh, double concussions, and I think he missed three games last year. He had a hamstring. He missed four games. He had some other games where he wasn't you know, really 100% physically, and he missed a fair amount of tackles. Uh, you know, it's a fourth pick in the draft, and I like when they took him in, in that, but you know, he did not look like the Pro Bowl player he was as a rookie. And, and, you know, the rest of the Chad Thomas and uh, be nice if this guy could play some defensive end. He was a third rounder. You have never hear his name mentioned. Um, so I, I think it's both Baker and Denzel are on the spot to produce. 
Absolutely. Nate Davis of USA Today analyzed the Browns. He says, new GM Andrew Barry, age 33, followed a strong showing in free agency with a sneaky good draft. Question is uh, now how long will it take rookie coach uh, Kevin Stefanski to implement the playbook and a new locker room vibe for a team that likely won't convene for months? 